Why take a DeFi loan or decentralized finance loan? I mean, if you've got the crypto anyway, why not simply sell your crypto and buy the item that you want? That is what we're going to be unpacking in this morning's video. Good morning, everybody. Now, in a recent article on MoneyWeb, where it explains some of the things that I did with decentralized finance, a lot of you guys that follow this channel, you know this, um, the type of DeFi things that we talk about. And let's just quickly scroll through this article. In fact, in this video, you can go and watch a little bit more detail of exactly what happens in the DeFi space and some of the amazing things that I've managed to accomplish with DeFi. But what happened was I got a flood of people reaching out to me saying, Richard, this is amazing. We'd like to know more about decentralized finance and more about decentralized finance loans. Please come for coffee, come for a beer, come for lunch. I want to spend an hour with you because I want to get firsthand information on DeFi loans. So to all of those guys that have reached out from out to me, please don't take it personally that I haven't replied. I really simply just have been swamped with that type of request. In fact, I could have beer, coffee or lunch for the next couple of years if I simply said yes to all of those engagements. But the most common question that I got was, Richard, if you've got the crypto anyway, if you've got the collateral, why take a loan? Why not simply sell it and buy whatever you need? And that is what we're going to be going into in a little bit more detail. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to share a personal story with you as to why that is such a bad idea. Now, first of all, it's a bad idea simply because if you sell your crypto and buy the property, you only have the property. If you take a loan, a decentralized finance loan and buy the property, you have the property and the crypto. Let's just go through a couple of aspects of these decentralized finance loans. First of all, no payment schedule. So you don't have to make any payments. You can extend the payments for 20 years, 40 years, as long as you like. Or if the price of crypto had to dramatically increase, you could simply pay off that loan. So you are not bound or obligated or forced to make any monthly payments. Second of all, if you don't make any payments and you never pay a cent back on the loan, crypto goes to naught, it doesn't matter. You simply walk away from the loan. No blacklisting, no bad credit. In fact, no one knows. It is only your collateral that put that is put at risk and lost. That trips a lot of people up and they don't understand what I'm saying. How can you take a loan where you don't have to pay it back and you don't have to make any payments? Once you start to understand how a collateral loan works, that will become clear. But I'm going to gloss over that. We can get back to that in another video. Then, of course, you know that you're going to get the loan. It is a permissionless loan. In other words, you don't have to ask your bank manager and hope and, you know, try and make sure that you've said everything correctly and you've submitted just the perfect documents. And then it's a 50-50 whether you get the loan. It is a permissionless loan. So you know You've got the collateral, you're going to be granted the loan, and it's going to be a painless exercise. Normally takes less than 10 minutes. So these are some of the huge advantages of taking a loan and buying an asset. Wealthy or smart money will always use and leverage their position to acquire more assets. Dumb money will simply swap one asset for another, and that way never grow their financial portfolio. But... Buying property with these type of loans is not the only thing you can do with a decentralized finance loan. Let's have a quick look at the Bitcoin price today. We can see that it is starting to dip. You know, just a day or two ago, we were over the 300,000 and now we're at 280. What is going to happen is possibly the Bitcoin price or the Ethereum price is going to fall more. I've always been in a position where I'm invested in Bitcoin and I don't have any fiat or I don't have any rands. When the price plummets, I can't buy more because I just simply don't have the money. This is another huge case. If you are secure in the understanding and you really believe that the Bitcoin price is going to bounce back, you could simply take a decentralized finance loan, buy the dip. When the Bitcoin price goes back up, sell a portion, keep the profits and pay off the decentralized finance loan. Now, I'm not a financial advisor and this is called, called leveraging. It is risky. Things can go the other way and you can get hurt. 
But if you've been in the market for a period of time and you understand this type of flexibility, this type of leverage, it can help you to increase or grow your portfolio. But as I say, a caveat there, be careful. It can be risky. If things go the other way, you can lose out. A lot safer bet would be to buy a physical asset. This morning on MoneyWeb, there was a podcast published where we speak about some of the uh, opportunities in DeFi. We speak about the traditional financial system and we just banter and chat for about 30 minutes. I think it's quite entertaining and it's quite interesting. So I'm going to leave a link to three things in the description below. First of all, the first article from MoneyWeb, second of all, the podcast, and third of all, the video where I spoke about, I spoke at the conference and spoke about DeFi or decentralized finance. But now it's time for a personal story. In fact, two personal stories. And I'm going to share these personal stories with you guys so that you can understand, first of all, why it is a bad idea to sell an asset and buy another asset. In other words, to answer the question that we originally asked in the beginning of this video as to why you wouldn't just sell your crypto and buy the property if you wanted to. Do. The reason I'm going to share these personal stories is to illustrate real life real world examples of what has actually happened to me personally. The first story, and if we look at this article, the headline sort of touches on it. I bought a property, they say 600K, but it was actually 650,000. And I took a DeFi loan, I then bought the property. So remember, I get the title deed, I am full owner of that property. The decentralized financial loan is not connected to that property in any way. I now own that property. But in the next couple of months, the price of Ethereum increased so dramatically that I was able to draw some of my collateral out of my decentralized finance loan and pay off the property. And that is how I ended up paying what is uh, expressed as 200,000 for a 650,000 Rand loan. So it is simply done because the price of Ethereum increased so dramatically that if I had sold my asset, my crypto, and bought the property, I would have then paid the equivalent of 600,000. But because Ethereum went up, I was able to sell just a fraction and pay it off, thereby keeping my crypto and keeping the property. That was a truly successful financial story. Now, the second story, and this will clearly illustrate why you shouldn't sell your crypto to buy an asset. There was a property, a townhouse that I wanted to buy. It cost 3.9 million Rand. It was a property that I wanted to live in. So I went and sold my Bitcoin. But at that time, Bitcoin was around about 10,000 Rand per coin. I know that sounds crazy because if we look at Bitcoin now, it's 280,000. But at that stage, it was around about 10,000. Now, with lawyers' fees, transfer fees, and all the fees that um, go in hand with buying a property, I had to pay 420, um, of, sorry, 4.2 million rand for this property. So let's just do the maths. What that meant is that I had to sell 420 Bitcoin, which at that stage was over, well over 90% of my Bitcoins. But my thinking was, if I could have a paid off property, if I no longer had the burden of paying rent or paying a monthly bond, that would certainly set me free and allow me a certain level of lifestyle. So I took the decision to sell over 90% of my Bitcoins, 420 Bitcoins for 10,000 Rand each. In fact, I sold them between 9,000 and 11,000. It averaged out to about 10,000 each. And I went and I purchased that property. Now, in hindsight, if we look back, what did I pay in today's value? Well, it could be argued that I paid 420 Bitcoins, but I think more people are interested in the Rand value. So we simply take 420 and we times it by today's price, which is 280,000 per Bitcoin. And as you can see, I paid for that property at today's Rand value, 100 and 17 million Rand for a 4.2 or a 3.9 million Rand property. And this is only a couple of years ago, guys. And I think this clearly illustrates that I, first of all, that I've made a huge mistake. But second of all, 
that you should not sell your cryptocurrency to buy an asset. You should simply loan against your crypto collateral, buy the property, because as crypto goes up, we will be able to pay that loan back, thereby keeping the crypto and keeping the asset. And finally, guys, the final thought that I'd like to leave with you is a quote from Einstein. Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. That's it from me. I'm out.